There's no question in my mind that the issues on the border of sovereignty and security check all the boxes for that which could become a national movement over the next two years. But with any national movement, you need at the head an individual who has the capability, the intelligence, and the determination, and the street fighting ability to take that information and get it out to the people. So please warmly welcome Mr. Tom Holman, former director of the Immigration Customs Enforcement. I'm always pissed off. <laughs> I, I am. But I didn't used to be. I, you know, it's just it's, it's because of the things I've seen in my career, a lot we heard from Chris, that shaped the, the, the man I become. I, I, I certainly... Also, I started my, my, my dad was a cop, my grandfather was a cop, Holman is a cop family, and I knew I always wanted to be a cop, so I was a cop in upstate New York, and I never thought I'd be a border patrol agent. I ran into some border patrol agents on the St. Lawrence River. I said, what do you guys do? How much do you make? Okay, I want to do that. <laughs> and I took the border patrol test, and, and, I, and, I, got, and I was a border patrol agent down in uh, Campo, California. And I never thought my life would take me in this direction. It's like what's happening right now. It's like... When I first got a phone call uh, from Tom, I was like, you're bullshitting me. What the hell do you mean? You won't break it, you know, it was, it was, no, about me and um, about my experiences. But the more and more I thought about it, the more and more it made sense because the battle we're in for our lives right now, this nation. Um, people ask me all the time, what, you know, why I get so emotional. I, you know, I lose my temper on Fox sometimes and, and because, you know, they know how to spin it. You know, guys like Brian Kilmeade knows how to ask a certain question <laughs> that would piss me off. And, um, and, and, and you saw what happened in Congress. I, you know, some people say I was disrespectful. Maybe no, my mom would have no, said it. No. My dad would have said, give it to him again. Um, but I spent almost 35 years on the border. In 1984, I put that border patrol uniform on and stood on that border. And I saw things that I will never forget. Uh, I've seen things that I still have nightmares about. I've seen things I had to get help to deal with. That's a true story. I'm a tough guy, I think, but there's some things just break your heart. And that's why I'm always pissed. Because President Trump, the, the man was here a few, a few minutes ago, he gave us the most secure border this nation has ever had. Yes. Yes. Illegal immigration was down 83%. We're at a 35, 40 year low. Sir. Most secure border ever. And the Biden administration came in and tore it all down. And you heard me earlier, I, I was talking on, on tape that I've worked for six presidents, I'm, I, and I, I respect every president I've worked for, starting with Ronald Reagan. I respected Obama, I respected Clinton, because they came in office and said, we want a secure border. Some took it more serious than others. Some took it further than others. But they all even campaigned on it. And they all did something to try to secure this nation and protect, <coughs> protect our sovereignty. President Biden is the first president in the history of this nation that came into office and unsecured a border. Now, who the hell does that? <laughs> you know, he needs to be impeached. And Secretary Mayorkas, if his lips are moving, he's lying. <laughs> and let me tell you what, what, what insults me, and I, I, I respect every president that ever served, but I do not respect this current president. Amazing. And that's sad that I would say that, because I, I love this country. And I... I to even say that hurts me deep because he knows when he was vice president in 20, of 2014, 2015, I talked about the surge when I was talking to Congress, Alejandro Mayorkas was deputy secretary, Joe Biden was the vice president. We had a surge in 14, 15. They know what caused it and they know what we did to stop it. And now that they're president and secretary, they're doing the complete opposite of what we did in 14 and 15 to stop it. So this isn't incompetence. This isn't mismanagement, this is by design. That's right. They're opening that border up. And that's why I've lost respect in the man. He sold this nation out to the progressive left. He knew he needed their votes to become president. So he went all out. He voted for border, Joe Biden voted for border barriers. He voted for border walls when he was a senator. He gave billions of dollars to Border Patrol and ICE to enforce immigration law. Then he became president, he threw it all out and opened the border up. And they keep saying, the Trump administration, like, you know, 
the, the congressional thing, you know, they can call me racist and Nazi all they want. They've been in my house on Sunday mornings protesting me. My son's been bullied, and um, but he's a tough kid too. He won't take their shit. But you know, they they, they want to attack you and vilify you. And I remember that morning I did this testimony. That, well, I was, the, the guy who said I didn't care about kids unless they were white. Uh, he, I flipped a switch that day because it was the third time I testified since I retired. And that morning I told a story yesterday. I, mean, over in, I, was in, I was in San Francisco last night doing the same thing I'm doing right here. Um, that that morning I was leaving, and my wife stops me. She goes, "Why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep doing this to yourself?" They're going to call you names. They're going to accuse you of terrible things. They're going to badmouth a border patrol on ice. You don't need this anymore. You're retired. Why the hell are you going to put yourself through that? And I looked at her and said, well, first of all, I love my country. Okay. So I'm going to go defend it. Second of all, I promised the men and women of ICE and the border patrol, when I retired, I would never turn my back on. I'd always be there supporting until I take my last breath on this earth. That's good. Because I wore the uniform. And I was an ICE agent. I was the first ICE director that actually came up to the ranks. My biggest, proudest moment. I was the first director of that agency that actually was an ICE agent and came up to the ranks. <laughs> so we walked out church. Okay, I get it. But I want to say a prayer for you. I turned, I stopped her, and I looked her right in the eyes. Said, you remember to say a prayer for the first Democrat? Pissing me off today. I'm picking a fight. <laughs> and I went up and picked the fight. Because I knew what was going to happen. They were going to call me names. Washington Schultz. Someone buy her a bottle of shampoo, please. <laughs> it started with her. I was a bigot, and I lied on her testimony. After hearing what you don't see, when the chief of staff walked by me, I said, I'd like to talk to Washington Schultz. She was, what do you want to say? I said, I want to, I'm, I'm expecting to be charged with perjury. I, I want her to charge me with perjury. Well, why would she do that? Well, she said on national TV that I lied under oath. That is a crime. I expect to be charged. Please, I'm going to be charged. And I go, and when she charges me, and I went in court, because I'm going to prove everything I said was correct. Everything she owns, I'm going to own. Of course, I never got charged, right? So when the guy from Chicago, who said I didn't care about dying kids unless they were white, this is the same guy when he was working for the city council in Chicago. He, he approved sanctuary city policies, and they release criminal aliens to the street every day. And I can name at least 11 examples that illegal alien got released and killed a U.S. citizen. And he was in charge of that program. And he's going to sit there and make pretend he's all for justice and accuse me of not care caring about dying children. Look, my heart breaks for every child that comes across that border because I've seen a lot of tragedies. And what spent me off that day because, like Chris has seen, the thing that I, I, I still can't get over every time I tell the story, I, I, I choke up a little bit. Is because when we first became ICE, I was giving a speech at International Chiefs of Police in Dallas, Texas. I get a phone call from the director at the time, Michael Garcia. They knew I spent my entire career investigating criminal organizations that smuggle and traffic in people and drugs. And he says, uh, we need you to get down to Victoria, Texas. There's been a tragedy. We need you to get down right away and run the investigation. So they gave me an Air Marine flight with just the clothes on my back. I got on a plane in Dallas. They flew me down to Victoria, Texas. And I arrive at this place. By they go to the airport, helicopter takes me to the scene, and a Texas Ranger walks me through a crime scene. And for a kid that grew up in a town with 2,500 people, you know, I grew up milking cows. I'm, 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 not, I'm not a smart guy. I'm standing back with a tractor trailer and 19 dead people at my feet. And, about, and a five year old little boy who was suffocated to death. They were all in their underwear because they're trying to get some relief from the heat. Of course, when they laid on the steel floor, they didn't have burned skin. There were so many packed in the tractor trailer, when they died, they died standing because there was no room for them to fall. And when I stood back there, the crime scene photographer came and I was trying to instruct them on, on what pictures I needed and how I wanted them mangled. And I purposely looked at him and says, leave the boy alone because I cannot deal with it. I had a five-year-old son at the time. And I could just see my son's face. So I said, leave him alone. He's last. So we took all the pictures we needed, and we were moving the bodies out. 
And I did. The little boy laid there, and his father was hovering over him. And I laid there, I, I kneeled beside him, I was thinking, what was his last hour or 30 minutes like, this little boy? Suffocating death, can't breathe. He said, probably 175 in the back of that steel box. Can't see anything. Pure black. How horrified must he have been? How about the father? He put his child in that position. His child's dying in his arms. He can't help him. That pissed me off. And that's why I'm the Tom Holman you see today. It's that one single incident. Yeah. I ran Operation Ice Storm in Phoenix, Arizona, right after that incident. But, but, but we paused 16, the people in charge of that or alien smuggling organization, they're all in prison still today. So I'm glad we got every one of those responsible and sent them away. Right after that, it sent me to Phoenix, Arizona, run Operation Ice Storm, where alien smuggling organizations were rip, ripping off each other's loads. Illegal aliens worth as much as a, a kilo of coke. So these criminal organizations were bringing 50 illegal aliens into Phoenix, they put them in a stash house. That's when they call the relative and say, okay, you owe us $5,000, wire it to this account. And they got so brazen, they, they agree with the family, I, okay, I'll smuggle your child to uh, Chicago for 10000 They enter an agreement, they bring, the ch they bring the alien in, they put them at the house, they call the relatives up, you owe us $20,000. You said it was 10 when I was 20. We can't afford it. You better afford it, we'll kill them. And they did. Bodies were piling up in Phoenix. That's why they sent me over there. Phoenix PD couldn't keep up. But they find dead bodies almost every day. One person that couldn't pay his smuggling fees, he died by being stabbed in the face over 20 times. 20 times stabbed in his face because he couldn't afford to pay a smuggling fee. <clears throat> One sister got real brave. They called her up and she was supposed to pay the fee. She doesn't have the money. They tortured her brother while she listened on the phone. Luckily, someone else in the house called us at the same time, and she actually gave us a phone number of the person she was talking to, and we did our cop thing, and we found him. And we actually rescued that man. He was, he was uh, bound with hands and feet behind him. His entire face was wrapped in duct tape. He had a hole poked in the mouth, and had a straw in his mouth. That's how he breathed for days. We found him like that in a closet, beaten, beaten to hell. These cartels, as Chris said they don't give a shit about these people. They're just a they're just a, they're just a commodity. So when we got the greatest president I ever worked for, actually secured a board at the highest level ever, then you get a president come in and undoes it on purpose. What the hell is he thinking? They they constantly just say Trump's policies are inhumane. I heard that during a hearing. You guys, Holman, you're 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 racist and your your policies are inhumane and you separated families. Well, first of all, Trump's policies were not inhumane. When the when illegal immigration is 83 percent, when you got a 45, a 35, 40 year low in illegal immigration, how many women aren't being raped? How many children aren't dying? How many pounds of fentanyl didn't get into the country to kill our young people? President Trump saved lives. The wall works. As soon as Joe Biden came in, he stopped building the wall. Why would he stop building the wall? Jen Psaki stands at the White House. I remember watching that day, saying we stopped building the wall because it was ineffective. Stone cold lie. If you go to CBP website, every place they built a border barrier, every single place they built a border wall, illegal immigration went down. Illegal drug flow went down. Deaths went down. Every place. So who the hell does this president think he has to come in and say, I'm going to stop building a wall? Why would you do that? Why would you make our country less secure? President Biden's policy is inhumane. He wants to talk about family separations. Zero tolerance, 2,500. He's already separated over 100,000 children from their parents because they buried them because they died of fentanyl overdose that were pouring across the border. DEA, that's not Tom Holman. DEA said 95% of fentanyl in this country that are killing kids are coming across the southwest border. Why? Because the border is wide open. Why? Because the criminal cartel sends a large group of migrants, usually family units, to one area. They'll send 200 family units to one area. And that overwhelms the border patrol. Border patrol sends everybody to deal with a humanitarian crisis. Meanwhile, there's 100 miles of border empty now because border patrol is all working on the humanitarian crisis. The criminal cartels control our southern border. I talked to three chief patrol agents in the past month that worked the southern border. They're, they're chief patrol agents, their sectors. Their statement to me is, we have lost operational control of our southern border. The United States of America does not control the southern border of this nation.
The criminal cartels in Mexico do. We can't control it. We can't contain it. We can't catch it. When I talked about 67,000, that was last month. Last month, 67,000 people crossed the border were not arrested. Weren't fingerprinted, weren't by, they got by the border patrol. Where did that number come from? Drone traffic, cam traffic, and central traffic, they can't respond to, but it's counted. They can look at a drone traffic, they, they picked up, a, a, or, or a camera traffic, say well, there's 11 got away there, we didn't get to it. 67,000 in one month. Illegal aliens from 157 countries. If anybody thinks that none of that 67,000 didn't come from a country that is forced terrorism, they're full of shit. Right, totally. Where's John Gond? Where's John Gwad? Where's he at? Where's he, John? You know this as well as I do. Don't tell me no one's suspected terrorists haven't crossed that border. Border Patrol arrested 16 FBI screening database. 16. That's where they arrested. Two thousand two hundred and fifty-three people 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 arrested. After 9-11, we, we put a lot of checks in place. You can't get a plane ticket. You can't get a visa because there's the visa security program. Your name, your information is run through all these databases, including DOD Intel databases. If there's any derogatory, derogatory information on you at all, or a relative, or a friend, you're not getting a visa. So how would you come and blow something up? The same way 67,000 did last month and not get caught. That's what makes this issue, and that's why I'm, I'm really excited about this project, because this is, I don't care what your thoughts are on illegal immigration, but I'll tell you this, 35 years, I can tell you, illegal immigration is not a victimless crime. People think, well, they just come here to get a better life. There's a whole underbelly, and, and, and Chris covered it really well. People are dying. Cartels are making billions. People are suffering. Americans are dying of overdose deaths. Illegal immigration is not a victim of crime, first of all. But let's say you, 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 don't, you don't believe the immigration game. Oh, how about the humanitarian costs? That's right. How about why these people suffer? How about the few stories I just told you? And that's what I've been involved in. And I can I can go on, I can speak to ten o'clock tonight telling you a lot more stories. It's just as sick as that one. How about the humanitarian crisis? How about the public health crisis? This administration has released thousands of COVID positive people into this nation. We know that. That's not a guess. That's a fact. They have put COVID positive people on planes. In, in buses and send them all over this country. And that's just one disease. How about, how about TB? TB comes across the border every day. I had one guy, my Zeiss director, had one guy had TB so bad we, didn't, we, we, we couldn't recognize the strain of TB. It was unrecognizable. We worked at the Texas Department of Public Health. We worked with the CDC trying to figure out what the hell is this and how do we treat it? Because nothing that we had would work. He was in custody for like eight months until they came up with some sort of cocktail that was effective. What if he would have got into the school system? He was 17 years old. What if he got in the high school system? So the disease, the, 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 uh, the, it's, it's, a, it's a public safety crisis. Border Patrol has arrested over 18,000 convicted criminals the first year on Joe Biden. They've arrested 18,000 illegal aliens who already were convicted of a serious crime. How many didn't they catch? On the first year of Joe Biden, there's over 600,000 gotaways. We're going, to we're, going, we're, going to, we're going to shred that number this year. Because 67,000 just last month, do the math, that's 800. 600,000 first year gotaways. How many of them are criminals? Again, criminals don't want to be arrested. Gang members don't want to be arrested because they, they run their fingerprints, they're going to be found who they are. The chances are they'll be detained. Until ICE decides they can't pick them up, the secretary says they can't pick them up anymore. So how many criminals come across? Well, it's a public, a public safety crisis. But most, the most concerning thing to me it's a national security crisis. We don't know who the hell's coming in. That's right. That's right. Someday we're going to find out. It's coming. John, is it coming? Yes, it's coming. God help us. That's why this project is more important than any time in my career. It's because this administration has turned their back on the oath they took to, to serve this nation. This country is less safe because of them. And we're in, a, we're in a national security crisis of immense proportions. And we need to educate the American people. I'm one guy. I can talk on Fox News every day. I got three shows tomorrow. But how many people are going to see that? I can yell at Congress all I need. I'll, I'll, you know, I can yell at them every time. I, I don't think they'll bite me back up. <laughs> but the Republicans will, but the Dems won't. I think this project's important. And I, I don't think the story's really about me. I think the story's about 
the men and women wearing that green uniform. Yes. I think it's about the men and women of ICE. The people I love. I love every one of those people. Yeah, and before I end, before I end, I want to let me throw the administration on the bus one more time. The men and women of the Border Patrol, the men and women of the ICE, they need this project. They need it more than anybody. They have no morale. Their morale is in the toilet. The first, pres the first speech President Biden gave after he became president, he says the last administration let children starve to death on the banks of the Rio Grande Valley. He's talking about the men and women in green uniform, the 20,000 men and women that's put their lives online in this country every day. That saved, saved over 14,000 lives last year. They pulled people out of the river, found people straight in the desert, they found abandoned children as young as three years old. They saved thousands. And their commander in chief accuses them of watching children starve to death on the banks of the Rio Grande. That was said. I saw it. I was sitting there watching it on TV. I still got a TV. I'm surprised. I had something in my hand at the time. <laughs> how do you, how does, I, I've never heard a president of the United States attack the men and women who, who defend our border day and night. I was a border choice. Let me tell you something. 3 o'clock this morning, I guarantee you, 3 o'clock this morning, a sensor is going to go off in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be a foot sensor. It's going to be on a dirt trail someplace. That border patrol agent is going to respond to that sensor. Something's walking north on that uh, dirt trail. Who is it? Migrant looking for a better life? Heavily armed drug smuggler? Jihadi. He from C a Jihadi? Exactly. He doesn't know and she doesn't know, but they're going to stand there and take it on while you and me are sleeping. Yeah, that's right. And the President of the United States attacks them? Are you serious? When I watched that speech, I was so livid, I couldn't even think straight. And of course, Fox Falls didn't want to do a show next month, they knew I'd be pissed. But I cannot believe, I've never seen anything in history, I spent 35 years carrying a badge, and I've never seen anything like that. Then ICE, they, they, they demoralized ICE. The Secretary of Homeland Security, in the biggest crisis on our border in history, again, we went from the most secure border, and within six months, historic illegal immigration. That's not by accident. And at the same time, we have historic numbers on the border. Secretary's out saying, being in the country illegally is not enough to be arrested anymore. What? What an idiot. That's right. He's told the world, you can come to this country and be here illegally, and I'm not going to let ICE arrest you. Because being in the country illegally by itself is enough reason to ICE make an arrest. ICE can't arrest someone who's been here illegally anymore. I can't believe it means saying that. The secretary said it. And, this, and, and three days later, he says, ICE can't do work site enforcement operations anymore. The number one reason people come to this country is to get a job. If we didn't get them in jail, we're using them out of work site. Well, we can't get them in jail anymore because ICE can't arrest public safety threats unless they're an aggravated felon. And they, and they got to be convicted. In today's world, you can be an MS-13 gang member, you can get arrested in New York City for raping a six-year-old child. If you make bail, even though you're in the country illegally, even though you're an MS-13 gang member, even though you've been arrested for raping a child, ICE cannot touch you. That's what this administration has done. So if anybody needs this project, it's American people. But it's the men and women who wear that uniform. And just recently, you saw the president, the vice president, Members of Congress and the Secretary attacked the men and women of the Horse Patrol. I wore the uniform. I know the rules of engagement. They did nothing wrong. And you can see it on the videotape. They did nothing wrong. The only people that did anything wrong were the Haitians that entered the country illegally, which is a crime. I explained to AOC. What a moron she is. How the hell she got elected? I'm still trying to figure it out. Entry, entry the country illegally is a crime. The Haitians were in the wrong that day. Then they, then they ignored verbal orders by federal law enforcement officers, which is a felony. But who got straight through the coals? And, and the President of the United States said, well, they're whipping these people, and that's, that brings up conjures of uh, images of slavery, and they're going to pay. Uh. Can you imagine being a GS-12 board patrol agent going home to your family that night, and you've been called out by the President of the United States as a racist, that you raped somebody because they're black, and you violated their civil rights, and the President of the United States promises you will be dealt with. You know, to this day, they're still on the beach. Where's the investigation? 
I, I've been screaming and yelling about every show I do. Where's the investigation? The secretary said it would be done in days. I, I ran internal affairs for two years. The supposed crimes on tape, it takes about a half hour to write that report. They did nothing wrong. Now here's what I'm hearing from my sources. The investigation is done. They're innocent. They're not going to announce it because it's going to embarrass the president. It's going to embarrass the secretary. Meanwhile, these board agents who have been dishonored, their families who were bullied in school and church, Where's their justice? You know, Border Patrol, Border Patrol model is honor first. That's your model. The President of the United States stole their honor. And he's not to do a damn thing about it. Now you know I'm pissed. All those things wrapped up. so are we. I'm glad. I'm, 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 you need to be pissed. Everybody needs to be pissed. Exactly. One second. I'm going to wrap up right now. I'll go to questions. What keeps me going? First of all, well, I'm suing the hell out of them. I've written affidavits to the state of Texas, the state of Florida, the state of Arizona. I'm the expert witness for the state of Texas. We're four and all. We stopped the moratorium. We got to remain in Mexico, put back in, even though we're doing half-ass. And I just said last week, the court needs to bring my orcas in, hold them in contempt of court. Because 187 crossings, 187,000 crossings the last month, how many people returned to remain in Mexico? 57. The Trump administration removed 57 a second. So bring him back in, hold him contempt of court. He says, I don't care, secretary. Cheers. He puts his pants on just like I do. He charged him with a crime. Okay. We, sued, we sued on ICE priorities, just won that. We sued on collecting welfare benefits, won that. Well, at least we've got to stay on it. So look, God bless Governor of Texas. He's done more to secure our border than this administration has. There's more you can do. We're looking at the use of the invasion clause of that constitution, let the states actually enforce immigration law. That's being, a lot of constitutional scholars are, are, are working on that issue. Should it happen? I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But I can tell you this. We're in trouble. We got a national security crisis of immense proportions. I think we should do anything legally right. to secure our border because we're in trouble. So I spend my days suing them. I've written more affidavits suing this president than I did as an agent, you know, resting the bad guys. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm at my desk at least once a week writing an affidavit for somebody. Suing the Biden administration. Good. Good. So that keeps me going. One more thing keeps me going. I'll share, I want to share a little story. I told a story the last time I was there. You heard the story, John. What keeps me going is a story I like to tell. I know it embarrasses me a little bit, but I did a Fox show a couple months ago. It's probably about like four months ago now. And I, I raised, my, you know, I raised my voice. I got mad. I actually threw a paper. I didn't know I threw a paper. Or someone said, "Why did you throw a paper?" I didn't throw a paper. I looked at the tape. I threw a paper. But in the, and. Uh, so I got real mad about something because because I give a shit about what happens to this country. And uh, as soon as the show was over, I, I took my mic earpiece off and my cell phone rang. It was President Trump. It was Tom. Good job. He goes, uh, a couple things. That picture behind you, is that you and me when I gave you the National Security Medal? I said, yes, sir. Blow it up, I can't see myself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number two, stop getting so mad. You and I will fix this in 24. Woo! So I pray to God. And I, I mean this. I know he hasn't announced yet. I know. He's, I know there's a lot of rumors. I I, I made a commit to him right here at Mar a Lago a couple weeks ago in his office. If he comes back, I'll come back. We'll fix this shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there is more because what, what another thing he did when he when he overturned all Trump's policies. What else did he do? You're overturning the Trump census rule. What does that mean? Millions of people are going to be counting the next census, which is going to result in more seats in the House for the Dems, right. which is perpetual poverty. So like Todd College, and, and plus they're talking about giving a big amnesty plan. They think these are all future Democratic voters, but until they can vote, they can be counted in the census, which is going to equal more seats in the House for the Democrats. Because 90% of them is going to go to sanctuary cities. I don't, think, I don't think he knows what the hell is going on, first of all. To be honest with you, I really think they put him in position because they know they can work him, because he, he isn't. And I'm not picking on the man, he's just not sharp mind right now. We all know, see that. I think the progressive left is, wants to fundamentally transform this nation. They want continued power in this nation. Is that? And, and, you know, and you want, you know, who's running the right house? Susan Rice. That isn't hard to figure out. But this is about fundamentally transforming this nation. And, and, and we got to stop them. I mean, this isn't America I grew up in. And I, 
And one thing I liked about Trump, you know, he just wanted everybody to you know, fly American flag on the front porch. Where I grew up, everybody had a flag on the front porch. Everybody. So northern borders being northern borders being overrun, but not to the level of southern border is. If you got a lot of money, if you're a Chinese national, you're gonna go to Canada and cross through the, the northern border. If you're from Pakistan, India, Chinese will pay as much as forty, forty five thousand dollars for smuggling. Canada's immigration visa requirements are non existent pretty much. So it's easy to get to Canada and cross the northern border. I mean I, I live up there. I mean you can, there's, you can, there's, there's hundreds of miles of border unguarded. There's actually port of entries where you pick the phone up and call in because no one's there. <laughs> and, and, and let me, that reminds me one thing I forgot to say on the southern border. When I say the border is half, half open, Border Patrol has said 40 to 50% of their manpower is no longer on the line. They're in processing centers, processing the humanitarian crisis because the criminal cartels send these groups in. Remember those Haitians on the bridge, 15,000 Haitians on the bridge? They pull all the resources in to process them because this administration is more concerned with the optics of the crisis because it doesn't appear to be a crisis, there isn't one. They don't want to see the overcrowding. So they took all the officers in the process. 224 miles of border was unguarded for a week. 224 miles of border, not a single border until he's on the southwest border. Don't tell me the cartels are have a field day with that. So this is, again, if, if anything, it's, it's a national security issue that I've never seen in my career. And, and God help us. It's, something's coming. And it, it, we, I don't know how we can prevent it. What's the first thing you'll do? What's the first thing you'll do when you get back in? Turn out every Trump policy. That's good. Day one. I was asked the other day, show you know, what would you do? I said, I, we, we'll turn on Trump's policy. We'll fix it in a week. In a week, we'll shut the numbers down eighty five percent. That's good. Because we'll put the, we'll put the uh, same we policy back in. We can't have any more questions. <laughs> uh, look, well, this thank is, you. Yeah, Tom Holman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>